Hi everybody, I'm Jared Pike. This is Shell Point Today for the weekend of November 8th, 9th, and 10th. On today's show, we visit the Seafood Buffet, which is a hit every Friday night in the Crystal Room. But first, it's been a big month for fans of Apple computers, with the introduction of new iPhones and new iPads. There's also a new version of iTunes, the software that used to be for just listening to music, but now you can do everything on it from watching TV shows and movies to attending university classes for free. How do you get the most out of iTunes? Well, find out by joining the Apple Group, who are meeting Friday at 1.30 p.m. in the Oak Room at the Woodlands. All are welcome. And then, when I say ham radio, what comes to mind? Is it Morse code beeps coming from up in the attic? Well, today it's called amateur radio, and Morse code has given way to voice communication, unique TV signals, and emergency communication by first responders. There are several amateur radio operators right here at Shell Point, and they'll be giving a demonstration this Saturday at 10 a.m. in the Grand Cypress Room. Come and see these amateur radios and their operators in action. Now, the weekend means several things at Shell Point, but one you can rely on. Friday night is seafood night in the Crystal Room. It's an all-you-can-eat buffet with different seafood choices all the time. I visited with Greg Pindara to learn more about the Crystal Room's seafood buffet. Hi everybody, it's Jared Pike with Greg Pindara, manager of the Crystal Room, and it's Friday night. And Greg, people love to eat seafood on a Friday night. Yes, it is. In South Florida, we love our seafood, especially here on Friday night. On Friday night. And so the Crystal Room is the place to get your seafood fix on a Friday night. And it's not just one type of seafood, it's many types of seafood. Right, Greg? That's right. We serve all different kinds of fish. Uh, Broiled fish, fried fish, we always have fried shrimp and, and a seafood salad, but everything else rotates. So, let's go back behind the scenes and see what types of fish are on the bar tonight. Let's just go down the line and see what, on a sample Friday, it could be any Friday, let's see what the choices could be on this Friday night all-you-can-eat seafood buffet. Let's go. Let's go. We always offer mashed potatoes and gravy for the wholehearted people that like to have their potatoes in the evening. We have corn fritters tonight and we have options on that every week. We have our vegetable line which is your, your carrots, your carrot coins. Then we have a southern uh, greens and there's, there's bacon in there and there's uh, onions in there that really help spice it up and make it a southern green. Um, we have red beans and rice tonight and the reason we have the red beans and rice tonight to go along with the jambalaya. Now the jambalaya is a non-seafood item and every week we have at least one non-seafood item for those that want to come and have their spouse or loved one have their great seafood buffet but then again they can have something that's not seafood. And that's, that's important because these are just sample items. It's a different selection every Friday night, is that right? That's right. We rotate the items every week. All right, what else do we have tonight? We have stuffed mussels. They're mussels in, with a bread stuffing, and we have that every once in a while. Tonight, our featured fish is a red snapper, and again, it comes with a lobster bis sauce that has spinach, uh, capers, and onions in it. And you can get it if you if you don't like the sauce and just ask one of the servers or myself and we will get you fish without the sauce. Flexibility and versatility here at Seafood Night at the Crystal. Now what's in the what's in the box here? Of course right here we have our fried shrimp, which we have every week. And people we go through about 40 pounds of this on a Friday night, so it's pretty popular. I don't think we'll ever not have fried shrimp. <laughs> and I see the seafood salad there. Yep. There's the seafood salad that we also have every week. Now in this chafing dish, we have our Friday night surprise of the week. We not, sometimes we have frog legs or sometimes we have calamari, but tonight we're showing uh, breaded scallops as our uh, Friday night feature of the week. So every Friday night is different, and I know some people like the same thing every Friday night. Well, they have some of the same stuff, but you also have different things, so you never know. It's, it's always a pleasant surprise. Well, that's true, too. And it's not only just the buffet. When you come on Friday night, for the $14.95, you get the soup bar, the salad bar, and a fantastic dessert bar. Yum. So after an all-you-can-eat fantastic seafood meal, 
there's the icing on the cake, literally. We have a whole table here full of desserts, Greg. Yes, we do. We have a big variety. Uh, tonight we have a carrot cake, a chocolate cake, and we have two pie, uh, blueberry pie and a coconut custard pie, and we have finger desserts, the little brownies. Um, just If you want just a little piece of something sweet, there's always cookies, and we always have a featured hot dessert, and tonight that is bread pudding. Wow, so, and this is all included? This is all included in the $14.95. All right, folks, so every Friday night in the Crystal Room, you pay $14.95, you get all you can eat of all these seafood choices, all the vegetables, all the salad bar, all the soups, all the breads, and finally, all the desserts. It is a deal and a half, folks. So, come down to the Crystal Room Friday night, seafood night. Let's find out what else our weekend has in store from Resort Services. Then after your Academy News, Menus, and Village Church Connections, stay tuned for our Shell Point TV Week in Review. Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the Happening Segments. I'm Leslie and this is Beth and we're here to tell you all about Friday, Saturday, and Sunday's activities. We'll start off our morning activities with the 8 o'clock Making Changes to Medicare Coverage in the Buttonwood Room on the Woodlands. 8.15 is Stamp Ministry, Volunteers Welcome in the Stamp Room. 8.30 is the Marketplace in the Ministration Courtyard on the island. It's from 8.30 to 11.30. 9 o'clock is the Men's Match Play Doubles Tennis in the Tennis Courts. 10 o'clock is Canasta, the Game Room in the Woodlands. 10.15 we have the Genealogy in the Osprey Room on the island. Also at 10.15 is the Inquiring Minds in the Social Center. 12.30, we have the Mixed Progressive Bridge in the Game Room in the Woodlands. 1.15 is Table Tennis in the Tarpon Room. Also at 1.15, we have the Quilters in the Osprey Room. 1.30 is the Model Train Room in the Train Room on the Island. It goes until 3.30. 1.30 is the Vespers Community Room in the Arbor. At 1.30 is the Apple Group in the Oak Room in the Woodlands. 2 o'clock is the Euchre in the Sable Room. 2.45 are the Great Decisions in the Manatee Room on the Island. 2.45 we have the Vespers, the Community Room in the King's Crown. 4.45 is Skip One Seafood on Fort Myers Beach. Pickup starts at 4.45 on the Island. 4.55 in the Woodlands and 5.05 in Eagles Preserve. And sign up is required. 6.45 Game Night in the Resident Activity Center on the Island. Now here's Bev to tell you about the Saturday activities. Thanks, Leslie. Uh, things don't slow down on Saturday. We have an 8 o'clock round robin men's doubles tennis going on at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. Then we move to 945 where we have duplicate bridge. That'll be played down in the manatee room. 945 we have a health connections class. Shell Point pole walking C-A-R-E class. That'll be in the health club and sign-ups required for that one. At 10 o'clock, we have Information Forum. They'll be in the Grand Cypress Room down at the Woodlands. 10.15, the model yachts will be sailing at the Woodland Commons Lake. We'll move to 1 o'clock, where the Library Lounge at the Resident Activity Center will have chess being played. Then at 1.15, we have table tennis being played in the Tarpon Room down in the tunnel. At 2 o'clock, we have the Saturday DVD being shown. It's Les Mis, the 2012 version. That'll be in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands. At 3.15, we have basic line dancing. That'll be down in the health club. At 6.30, it's time for duplicate bridge. They'll be playing in the manatee room on the island. At 7 o'clock, we have the second showing of Les Mis. That'll be the Saturday DVD in the Grand Cypress Room. Here's Leslie with Sunday's lineup for you. Well, Bev, at 9 o'clock is the Christian Life Studies in the Game Room in the Woodlands. Also at 9.15 is the Christian Life Studies in the Village Church. 10.15 is the morning worship in the Village Church on the island. It will be broadcasted live on Shell Point TV Channel 12. 2 o'clock, Mixed Golf League in the Shell Point Golf Club. 3.15 is the ballroom line dancing for beginners in the health club on the island. 6.15 is the evening service in the Village Church on the island. Thank you for tuning in with us today, and it looks like you guys have a very busy weekend ahead of you, so get out and have some fun, and we'll hope to see you back here next week. Hi, I'm Terry Kolath with your Academy Information for the Weekend. 
On Friday, November 8th at 9.15, our Adobe Photoshop Elements class continues in the Computer Teaching Center on the island. And at 10 o'clock, we have Using FaceTime on iPhones and iPads taking place in the Sable Room of the Woodlands. Sign up is required. At 1.15, Making Greeting Cards with Print Shop will begin in the Computer Teaching Center on the island. I'd like to tell you about our classes coming next week. On Monday, Talking is the New Typing with Bruce Findlay of Sundial. On Tuesday, Skype Basics with Joe Kramer of Lakewood. And Islam, its Origins, Growth, and Future, Session 2 with Professor Adrian Kerr. On Wednesday, Coffee with a Shell Point Hero for Haiti featuring Joseph Julmius, Housekeeping Supervisor right here at Shell Point Environmental Services. On Thursday, print from a tablet with Bruce Findlay of Sundial and Penny Modrich of Nautilus. Menus for the weekend, starting with Friday, November 8th. In the Crystal Room, the Crystal Platter is battered shrimp with seasoned fries and coleslaw. For dinner, it's the Seafood Buffet for $14.95. The soup on Friday is pasta fagioli. In the Island Cafe Friday, the lunch special is pulled pork sandwich with chips for $7.25. Dinner, it's Chef's Choice for eight twenty-five. dollars Friday night in the Palm Grill, we have two specials, Lamb Chops for twenty ninety-five dollars and Mussels Marinara for thirteen ninety-five. dollars Saturday, the Crystal Room is closed. Saturday in the Island Cafe, lunch is a French dip with onion rings for seven twenty-five. dollars For dinner, chicken gorgonzola with gnocchi and garlic bread for eight twenty-five. dollars Saturday night in the Palm Grill is Prime Rib Night for nineteen ninety-five. dollars also, they have Crab Newberg for $17.95. Sunday in the Crystal Room, they have their Sunday brunch for $17.50. Sunday in the Island Cafe for lunch, fresh fruit, cottage cheese, sliced tomato, and hamburger patty for $7.25. Dinner, it's Chef's Choice for $8.25. The Palm Grill is closed on Sunday. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm Andy Hawkins, a senior pastor of the Village Church, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about the weekend services. Sunday is always a special time at the Village Church. It's the Lord's Day. It's the time we devote ourselves to worship and uh, seek to, uh, to meet God in a special way, and I'm sure that's going to happen on our Sunday services. In the morning service, uh, certainly the choir will sing, and we'll have some wonderful opportunities for participation in worship as we sing some of the great hymns of the faith. Uh, I'm going to be continuing a series I began last week entitled Raiders of the Lost Soul. It has to do with uh, the passages in Luke 15 in which there are parables in which God seeks out either the lost sheep or the lost coin or the lost son. And this week we're going to be looking at the parable of the lost coin. It's a fascinating story and I think, I think it's rich in our understanding of what God does for those of us who are really caught up in the things of the world and need to be rescued by God. God. And it's a wonderful story, and I think a very encouraging one. And in the evening service, uh, certainly we we'll, we'll, uh, we love to meet God there and have good fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'll also be uh, involved in a series, I'll actually be starting a series on Sunday evening called Dimensions of Grace. It's a series that uh, will last about seven weeks, and it'll be off and on during the holiday season, of course. Uh, but the important thing to remember is that uh, the, the, the grace of God is multi-dimensional. There are various aspects of the grace of God which not only lead us to have a relationship with God, but also help us to walk in obedience to Him in so many different ways. You'll find that a very rich series that we're going to be starting on Sunday nights. So please join us this uh, Sunday, either in the morning service or the evening service or both, as we encourage one another in the scriptures and in worship. Thank you for joining us for the Village Church Connections, and we hope to see you soon. It's time for our Shell Point TV Week in Review. And we started this week witnessing the creative talents of our Shell Point employees as part of a pumpkin carving contest.
Adrian Kerr gave part one of his academy lecture on Islam. Part two is coming up on Tuesday. Let's hear more about it. Hello, everyone. I'm here today with Professor Adrian Kerr, and we're speaking about his latest offering in the Academy of Lifelong Learning. This is a focus on Islam. Thank you for joining me, Adrian. Thank you, Terry. It's always a pleasure. We are looking at Islam, its origins, growth, and future in two sessions in the Academy. This semester, we're really looking at Islam in a, in a variety of different ways, so we're so appreciative of having the entire history that you're going to bring us. Yes, Islam um, has a lot of good and bad press around the world at the moment, mostly bad. Mm -hmm. And so it's an interesting opportunity to take a look back um, in this two-part series. The first part is going to be the history, where Islam came from, how it grew out of other religions, its commonality with some of the religions in the area, the spread of Islam into the Middle East and North Africa and up into um, Europe. Um, the second part will be um, the interface between the now established Islam um, and the other great religion in the area, which of course is Christianity, and to some extent uh, Ju Judaism as well. Um, we'll touch on the, the criticality of Jerusalem, um, and then we'll move on to the more pr current situation where where is Islam going, um, what are most Islamic, uh, where are they most living, and it's interesting to know that Islam has moved east. Islam is no, no longer centered on the Middle East. Most people who worship Islam are in the Far East, which is an interesting cultural change in terms of numbers. Um, we'll also talk about the extremism that we tend to link um, some of the jihadists and the fundamentalists and with an um, less than acceptable behavior. And we'll try to investigate where did that come from? Is it representative of the religion or is it just some fanatics? And more importantly, I spent uh, three weeks in um, Egypt recently and I spent uh, two or three days at Al Hazar, which is the uh, oldest university in the world and has been there since the 10th century. And there they teach Islam to budding uh, imams and they come from all around the world. Africa, Asia, Europe, America, and you can attend the seminary, it is, um, and you learn about the fundamental principles and the practices of Islam. So I sat um, for three days with uh, some of their professors, and I asked them very in pertinent questions to how does extremism, fundamentalism, and jihadism fit into Islam, and the answers are quite interesting. I can't wait to hear what you found out. I think that's what the, the, such an amazing value that you bring to us. The uh, historical point of view, of course, but how does that affect us today? How does the history of something like Islam affect us today? And, and why do we only hear about the wildly destructive um, people in that faith? So you're going to give us a point of view. Yes, and I'll also try and balance it. So that I'll neither take one side or the other, and I'll try and build some links between uh, Christianity and Islam. And there are many, many, many links. Um, Jesus, for instance, is highly revered in Islam. Um, Moses, Abraham, all those uh, great prophets um, are fully respected in Islam. Um, so there are a lot of parallels between Christianity, the, the, the figures of Christianity and uh, Islam. Uh, the difference being, of course, that uh, Muhammad the prophet um, is declared to be the last prophet. Although in Islam, um, like the book of Revelations, that when the uh, evil descends on the earth, Jesus will return to save the planet. And that is commonality between um, Islam and Christianity. Interesting. This is going to be fascinating as always. You will be welcome to attend Islam Session 1 or Islam Session 2, depending on where you'd like to start in this journey on the history of Islam with Professor Adrian Kerr. Fine Mark Bank offered us some tips on protecting our credit cards. Hello, I'm Tiffany Williams, Managing Executive at Fine Mark National Bank and Trust on the island with today's Fine Mark Minute. While many consumers still like using paper money, more people than ever are pulling out their credit or debit cards to make purchases. And as card usage has grown, so has the number of criminals trying to steal your information. If you are ever the victim of credit or debit card theft, 
or fraud, catching it fast and reporting it to your CART issuer is key to resolving the situation. And while federal laws and industry practices protect consumers in these situations, there are important differences depending on the type of card. In general, under the Truth in Lending Act, your cap for liability for unauthorized charges on a credit card is $50. But if your debit card or ATM card is lost or stolen, or unauthorized purchases have been discovered, your maximum liability is limited to $50, only if you notify your bank within two business days. If you wait more than two business days, your ATM or debit card losses under the law could go up to $500 or potentially more. That's why it's extremely important to closely monitor your bank statements and credit card bills. Open them as soon as they arrive in your mailbox and contact your institution if your bank statement or credit card bill doesn't arrive when it's normally scheduled. This could be a sign that someone has stolen your mail and or account information. Also, if you have online banking, you can monitor your accounts whenever you want on your phone or your computer. While the law limits your losses if you fall victim, your protections are much stronger the earlier you react. If you have any questions, you can always stop by Findmark on the Island or give us a call. We'd be happy to help you. Our number is 461-5999. I'm Tiffany Williams with today's Findmark Minute. Every Wednesday, a group of residents travels to Beach Bowl on San Carlos Boulevard. We tagged along to see why bowling is so much fun. Hi everybody, it's Jared Pike here with Shell Point TV and it's time to go bowling. We're on location at Beach Bowl. It's on San Carlos Boulevard on the way to Fort Myers Beach. And with me is a group that goes bowling every Wednesday afternoon. A group of Shell Point residents, and they're gonna tell us why bowling here is so much fun. And so I'm gonna start with Don Trask. Don, tell me about how this group got started. Well, Cosmo started bowling with me about two and a half months ago. And now we got seven bowlers bowling today. I grew up in Maryland where we only had duck pins, and duck pins are what you call the little pins with the three balls, you use three balls. And when I moved to Naples, they had 10 pins, and I lived there seven years before I started bowling. I got started where I used to work. I used to work in the bank. After the bank closed, some of the employees we used to go bowling. So once, it, as John said, up in the Northeast, it's either duck pins or candle pins and I was never used to bowling the big balls like we have down here. So I'm not good at it, but I enjoy doing it. Now see, everybody says that, oh, I'm no good, but we're about to see how good these guys are. I think they're sandbagging a little bit. We'll see. Barbara, they, they told me that you're probably going to outroll everybody else. What do you think? They lie. <laughs> Al and I belong to a, uh, a uh, club over in, in uh, Cape Coral, and that group bowls uh, once a year. We get together and bowl. So it's been two years since we've bowled, so we'll see. Like Barbara said, we haven't bowled in so long, and we were never good bowlers. We had fun, though. That's the main thing. That is the main thing. It's the only reason why we bowl. Now let me ask you, if, if there are people, new people, who have never been bowling in their life, or even this kind of bowling, you will help them, or you, you would show them kind of what to do? How difficult is it to get started? It's not difficult, you just have to show them how to hold the ball and, and where to stand and for certain things, and then uh, they can always get the pro here to show them, if, to help them out a little bit too, if they want to. How fit do you have to be? 
go bowling. We don't have to be. We have some uh, ladies and gentlemen here that are much older than me, and they bowl every week, sometimes two, twice a week they bowl. And uh, the balls come anywhere from 8 pounds all the way up to 16, so I, will, I use the lightest ball, and it works out for me. And it's really not that hard. If people wanted to get involved, when and where would they do it? They could call either uh, Cosmo or myself. It's on the on the brochures that were passed out. Or they can come over here between 12.30 and 1 on Wednesdays and sign up. And you really don't have to be a bowler to sign up. You, you, it's, it's fun for everybody. And, and this isn't a league where there's a competition and, and it, it's just coming out and having fun, right? Exactly. And, and you don't have to bowl every week either. If you can make it, fine. If you can't make it, well, that's, that's okay also. Plus they give out little prizes for if you make a split or if a red or a green pin comes up on the number one and you make a strike, you get a little prize for that. So they give you a little incentive to, to bowl. <laughs> for instance, if the number one pin is red and you get a strike, they'll give you 75 cents back. <laughs> 75 cents, folks. <laughs> Listen, that's real money. That's enough for a bag of chips at this vending machine here. Listen, Beach Bowl is the place to be on Wednesday afternoons. It starts at 1 o'clock. Just come on down or call Don or Cosmo, and they can get you set up with how to bowl, even the basics of bowling. They can help you out with that. And uh, we want to fill this place with Shell Point residents. We want people to say, wow, those Shell Point people really know how to bowl. So, from Beach Bowl, this is Jared Pike and our bowling group, We'll see you on the link. The Employee Christmas Gift allows residents to tangibly thank employees. And how do employees use this money? Rose Donnelly told us how she shared the wealth. My name is Renee Maxwell and I live at Harbor Court and this year I happen to be, um, have the pleasure of being the chairman of the Employees Christmas Fund. And we have been working on this through the year in many different ways, but now we're getting to the very special part, bring in a lot of good funds for our wonderful employees. And today we're going to meet with one of my good friends, Rose. Rose, how long have you worked here? And tell me some of the things, I know many of the things that you do at Shell Point. I see you everywhere. Tell us about that. Well, I've been here at Shell Point uh, seven years, almost seven years, and I hadn't worked for quite a few years, and I was like really surprised that somebody hired me at my age, you know, to come and, you know, like start a career all over again. And I just love it. I, I, it. Coming to work every day is just the best thing for me. It's just being with everybody here, the staff, the residents. It's just an amazing family. And what I do here is I work in uh, the Shell Point Performing Arts and I handle all the concerts that go on in our village church and our small venue here at the Grand Cypress. And I do event the program coordinating for the academy and for the auxiliary. So I maintain records for that and I do budgets for those things. And um, I work a lot with um, residents in these things that I do. And it's really, it's really rewarding. I just love it here. I'm sure it is. And I feel the same way because I feel the closeness so often of all of you uh, employees that work with us because there is a bond and we appreciate that as residents too. We have a good history together, don't we? Um, besides being at Shell Point, uh, I grew up in Chicago and that's where you're from also and you happen to be part of the Sisters Order of the Nuns who taught at my high school. And it was really interesting how we met and found that out. We were working on an event in the village church one afternoon, putting pastries together on trays and we started talking about where we're from and, and all this and we discovered that Mother Theodore Guerin High School was a common denominator for us. So um, ever since that day it's been like it's just a close relationship that we have because of that and um, it really makes working at Shell Point really awesome. It really does. That's one of the main reasons why I said that I would really help on this committee and it's been a wonderful challenge. Um, I was wondering, we would like to interview you a little bit and wonder what some of the things that you might be thinking about with doing with your little fund. Well, I can tell you that in the past, 
I gave it to the um, St. Jude Hospital for Children because um, financially I was doing well that year. And the year after, I also gave that money to the Heifer International Organization. And I got a letter back from the family that received a calf um, in the Philippines who, because of my donation, they were able to get a calf and start learning how to raise their own animals for food. And um, it was really rewarding to do that. And um, last year, I decided to buy a house. And <laughs> I took on this big project and it needed work. And so we redid this house, the kitchen and that, and I needed a new stove. So I thought, hmm, Christmas bonus is coming. <laughs> So I went out shopping for my stove even before I bought my, actually closed on my house because I knew the house I was buying. So I went out and found my stove and I purchased it. I had them hold it for a month until I can move it into my new house, into my kitchen. But that's where I spent my money for last year's bonus. This year's bonus, I do not know yet what I'm gonna do with it but um, God's gonna steer me in that direction, so I'll know at the time when I receive it. That's wonderful, that sounds very, very good, and I know you'll find a good use for it, as so many of our other employees will. It's such a special time for them to maybe just do something that they haven't done before, or have a little extra cash to be able to touch on something that would mean so much more to someone else, and a lot of our employees do that. Um, I would like to mention to you that uh, you did receive your letters recently and explains our whole process of everything we've been doing through the year. And I know a lot of our residents are just coming back, so we hope that you will help and, and uh, help us build up our a little fund here that we're trying to raise for our employees. We have over 900 employees, and we're hoping that this year we can match what we gave them last year, which was pretty much near $500 a piece. We hope to be able to do that. And one more little boost I'd like to say is I'd really love to make it 100% in giving. No matter what you can give, it doesn't matter. Just so that we could all share in this giving at this very special time. We're going to be collecting our funds certainly through um, November 29th. Uh, and then we're going to be passing out those on the committee. There are five of us will be have the pleasure of passing out checks to all of our employees the following week on December 6th. So we hope that you will help us in this. And remember, this is the one time each year that we really give back to our employees in a very special way to show them how much we appreciate everything they have done for us and constantly do for us in so many ways throughout this year. Thank you and God bless. Last month, the Shell Point Photo Club chartered the Suzy Q for a sunset cruise to Picnic Island off the coast of Pine Island. Here are some of their photographs of the expedition.
The Festival of Heroes is coming starting on Monday. Mary Franklin previews all the exciting events that you can sign up for. Every November, Shell Point welcomes the new season with a signature event, a collection of exciting events with a grand theme. In the past years, we've had the Shell Point Olympics, Hometown USA, Art Fest, and even a back to school homecoming theme. But this year, we're doing something a little different. It's the Festival of Heroes. We're honoring the heroes in our lives, from national heroes like military veterans, to local heroes like our first responders, and more importantly, your own personal heroes among your family, friends, and neighbors. It all starts, appropriately enough, on Veterans Day, Monday, November 11th. We will gather for a hometown parade around the island featuring the Cypress Lake Marching Band, an honor guard, Boy Scouts of America, the Lee County Sheriff's Department, and you. We'll end up at the park under the Cuban laurels for a celebratory picnic with entertainment and fun. Family and friends are all welcome to the picnic, but you do need to pick up tickets beforehand at the service desk so we know how many to prepare for. And the best way to get to the picnic and parade that day is by bus because parking will be limited. That night, the Crystal Room is also honoring our veterans with an all-American menu and musical entertainment. On Tuesday, November 12th, Veterans are all invited to the Grand Cypress Room for a get to know your neighbor event on a grand scale. Bring out your war stories, your paraphernalia, uniforms, photos, and more, and get to know your fellow veterans. On Wednesday, November 13th, we get the rare treat of hearing from Joseph Jolmias, a hero in two countries. Joseph has done heroic work here in our housekeeping department for more than 20 years. But he is also a hero in his native Haiti, where he has traveled numerous times to help build schools and offer relief after the recent earthquake. The Academy is proud to host Joseph, a Shell Point hero for Haiti. That Wednesday night, the Village Church will hold a special candlelight celebration of remembrance and honor. Music, prayers, and inspiration will be offered to honor the heroes in our lives. The church is also participating in Operation Christmas Child, which sends special shoeboxes to needy children around the world. You can drop off your own shoebox donation anytime during the Festival of Heroes Week and be a hero to one of these wonderful children. On Thursday, November 14th, you get the chance to travel to Fort Myers and tour Lee County's brand new $17 million Emergency Operations Center. See how police, fire, and medics all coordinate with emergency management in the state-of-the-art facility. And Thursday night, you won't want to miss the first fine and performing arts concert of the season. Daniel Rodriguez was a New York City policeman on 9-11 and made a name for himself by singing at public events while wearing his uniform. Now this tenor has fully devoted himself to music and still brings the same level of inspiration and hope. Get your tickets now for Daniel Rodriguez, performing Thursday, November 14th at 7.30 p.m. in the Church Auditorium. Finally, on Friday, November 15th, we're having a special event in the Woodlands Commons, inviting everyone to become a volunteer hero. All the Shell Point volunteer groups will have displays set up and you'll have the chance to explore all the different opportunities and avenues where Shell Point residents volunteer their time. That's a full lineup of events and we're excited to deliver them to you. But there's one more unique aspect to this week. We're inviting all of you to submit photos of your own personal hero. It could be a family member or a celebrity 
even one of your friends here at Shell Point. Bring a copy of their picture to the Island or Wardland Service Desk, along with two or three sentences about why they are your hero. Just be sure to do it by November 1st, and then we'll display the entries all week on the Wall of Heroes in the Resident Activity Center. So, there you have it, the Festival of Heroes. It's going to be an inspiring week from November 11th to November 15th. And we hope it will also be an inspiring beginning to another great season here at Shell Point. Medicare Open Enrollment is here. And you have until December 7th if you want to make a change. Joy Darnell told us what's new with the Medicare Part D prescription drug plan. We appreciate it. There's a lot of changes this year for 2014, and not all of them are bad, and not all of them went up. You'll be very surprised this year. We've been doing Medicare for a, a Medicare D now for about eight years in some form or fashion, and this is the first year that things have gone down, which is surprising. So more to come on that. Um, all of you should have received, let me get my thing, Medicare and You, D. This is the new Medicare and You book. Just came out. You all should have received it since October 1st. They were all mailed out. There are 30 drug plans and three dual enrolled plans. For those of you who don't know what a dual enrolled plan is, it's the Medicare Medicaid portion of Medicare D. And there's only a few of the Medicare D plans that also go for Medicaid. So there's 30 plans, which is less than last year, but there's one more dual enroll plan from last year. So um, those are, so the changes for 2014. A lot of you also may have received changes within your books and your formularies. Um, be sure and look at the books that you receive from your companies. Um, of the plans that you may have because a lot of things have changed and we'll go over some of those things. Important dates for you to remember, open enrollment starts tomorrow, October 15th and goes to December 7th at midnight and it, all the plans start on January 1st of 2014. The basic deductible for 2014 is only $310 this year. So if you have a standard plan, 310. Last year it was 325. So as you can see, it went down. The drug coverage for the gap, and they did not get rid of the donut hole yet. They're closing it, but it's still still there. Is 28.50, and last year it was 29.70. So it actually went down 120 dollars before with the donut hole gap. Your out-of-pocket total expenses for 2014 is $45.50 and this is $200 less than it was last year. So to get to the catastrophic coverage, it's $200 less than it was last year. Most things in the government don't go down, but this year Medicare D did. Premiums for 2014 though are a wide variety. We have from $12.60 to $147 a month. So depending on what you'd like to choose, if you make it out of the donut hole and you um, spend all the money, which is the $45.50, then you get to the catastrophic coverage. And this year the payments for the co-pays are also down again for the catastrophic coverage. Um, last year it was 260. This year it's 255. For the brand it was 250. This year it's 635. So, kind of across the board, they've taken the cost down. So, if you make it out of the donut hole and all the way through the to the catastrophic coverage, your copays will be less. Credible coverage. All of you should have received a letter from your current provider stating whether you have credible coverage or not, whether it be a Medicare D plan, TRICARE, or Express Scripts, or whatever else it is, 
they had to send you a letter whether your coverage is credible, which means it's as good as a Medicare D plan. So if it's a retirement plan, then they, they did this. This is really important because if they sent you a letter that says you do not have credible coverage, you have 62 days to sign up without penalty for a Medicare D plan or supplement. And that's very important because in a minute we're gonna talk about the penalties, um, which can be very high in mounting these days. The um, 62 days, now if you have a plan that as of January 1st is not going to be credible, I know several people have come to me and said, my plan is going away and I have to pick a plan in open enrollment because I do not have credible coverage after uh, December 31st, you're not going to be subject to these penalties because you have credible coverage until the 31st. So on the 1st, you will have a new plan. But you do definitely need to sign up during this open enrollment period so that you're ready to go on January 1st. Shell Point takes all the Medicare D plans. So if you have anything on that list that I provided to you out of the Medicare book, we take them all. We also take a lot of other private insurances as well as TRICARE and a market basket full of, of the um, drug plans. So you can choose any one of them and be safe that you can get your meds here. Um, changes, how do we make changes? You can make changes through the website, which is www.medicare.gov or, or over the telephone. This is what the website looks like. It is really a very easy functional website, which is unusual for the government, but being a government website, it is really easy. To find a plan, right here is the button that you're gonna push, and it says find a drug plan. Now, um, since the 1st of October, the 2014 plans are what is loaded, so you don't need to worry about it. You'd have to click a different button to get to a 2013 plan. The 2014 plans, though, are loaded right here. So if you hit the plan, the next thing it's gonna do is ask your zip code so that it knows where you are and what plans are in your area. It's going to ask you a series of questions and then you're gonna enter your medications and the pharmacy, or you don't have to enter a pharmacy, and then it will give you a list of the plans. It will rank them in the order that you choose. Most people choose, they want the least expensive first. It will give you your annual deductibles. It will give you your total cost for the whole year. It would give you um, the meds and how much they'd be for every month. It really is a very easy program and, and, and easy to use. So, if you have problems, I'd be happy to help answer questions. I am not allowed to run it for you and sign you up. I have, I have to sign a conflict of interest statement for the MedD plan, so you, you have to be able to sign up yourself. I can run the uh, comparison for you and help you if you have a problem or help walk you through it. I'd be more than happy to do that, but I can't sign you up. So if you do need help signing up, then um, we might, there's, there's places here at Shell Point that we can get that for you, so um, if you need help. The other thing is the phone number. The, this is easy, 1-800-MEDICARE. So um, you can call them. The operators are very helpful. Just be sure that you stay with traditional Medicare, not an Advantage plan, and make sure you know what you're signing up for. They will send you a statement after you sign up over the phone and um, you'll need to verify the coverage that you chose on the phone is the coverage that they sent you. So you'll need to make sure that you get all that and they'll send you that in writing. So it's really important that you choose wisely and that you know what you're choosing so that you don't have a problem or a question or you're stuck with a plan until next year at this time when and you have to choose again. So it really is very important for you to choose wisely. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in next week for more stories and news from around your community. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for the weekend of November 8th, 9th, and 10th. I'm Jared Pike, and from all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great weekend. 
and we'll see you again on Monday.